dear viewer and my listener, once again, this is Apostle Peter Waigwa, the presiding minister, ICCK, International Communication of Christian Churches of Kenya. We are located at Utawala and we love God. We are just in Utawala, opposite Benedicta Academy, on your way to Gedongori, is a tarmac road. You just count a hundred meters and you see a big tent on your right. That's where we are situated. You are much welcome and God will bless you. My friend, allow me to put a scripture for you. In the book of Matthew 6, verse 31 to 33, the Bible says, Do not worry then what you're going to eat or drink or put on. Verse number 32, For even the, the Gentiles seek after these things, and the Heavenly Father knows that you need these things as well. Verse number 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you as well that's king james thank you my dear viewer and listener allow me to bring to you a message entitled the nonsense of worry listen to this worry is a weapon that the enemy always use to scare away people from their place of work, from their place of performance, from their place where they're gonna do things and succeed in life. Worry is that voice or that feeling that comes to you. It makes you unhappy. It makes you feel settled. It creates premonition in you. It creates, you know, the spirit of quitting in you. It shows you the problems that you have. And it always shows you that it's not possible to deal with those problems. And it shows you impossibilities of life. That is worry. And it is a tool. And worry does not know whether you are, the, you are a president or a CEO or a permanent secretary or a businessman or businesswoman. It doesn't know whether you are a journalist or not. It doesn't recognize anyone. It only recognizes people who know who they are. When you know who you are, what has no space in you? What has no space in your life? What has no space in your house? What has no space in your working place? Listen to me, my friend. One day, Jesus observed the people and he realized that people had a lot of potential to do things and succeed in life. But this weapon called worry it has snatched away uh, from people a lot of greatness and a lot of success. This message is a controversial message. Allow me to call it controversial in this way. When many people read the scripture, some tend to believe that Jesus talked about the people living you know, a relaxed life whereby that you don't need to work for you to eat or drink or succeed in life. Lazy people, when they read the scripture, they comfort themselves. The Bible says, do not worry what you're going to eat or drink or put on. Do not worry about tomorrow. And they end up settling, relaxing, sleeping. Jesus ne never meant that. He looked at the people. And by the way, <laughs> not only idolaters, not only idolaters add up being victims of this spirit, even the people who work, you can and you can witness this. You work in a certain office, you operate a certain business, but at one point you feel that things are not going the right way in your, in your, around you or in your life, and it's, you still work. Fear is not only for idolaters, and I told you it doesn't fear your title; it only fears you. If you're gonna know who you are, because this is a matter of heart. If your heart is strong, fear has no space in you. Now listen to me. 
Jesus never meant that people should sleep and, and, and you know and wait to eat and marry. No. Jesus meant that even after working, in, in most cases, you find that what you earn does not meet your budget. What you earn does not satisfy the needs of your life or the needs for your life. Now listen to this. Jesus said, do not worry. Because worry has destroyed so many people. Now listen to this, my friend. Jesus spoke and said, do not worry what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink or put on. And Jesus, he lists down five good examples. If you read from verse number 25 of that chapter 6 of Matthew, Jesus gives five examples. Example number one is, you know, he, he's considering meal or food and life. Number two, garment and body. Number three, ladies or the flowers of the field. And King Solomon. Listen to this. And the other one, the birds of the air, the sparrows. And the other one is grass. Listen, Jesus says that even the sparrows of the air, the falls of the air, they don't toil. They don't sow. They don't even harvest or, you know, gather into barns. And Jesus says, but your heavenly father feeds them. And he, he goes on to ask you a question. Are you not much more better than they? If the sparrows of the air, they don't sow, they don't harvest, they don't gather into barns, yet they eat, the heavenly father feeds them. Jesus asks them a, qu a question. Are you not much better than they? Much means higher. It means larger. In other words, you are larger, you are higher, more valuable, more special than the birds of the air. When God created everything, he put it under, under the subject of human being. He gave Adam and Eve the power to control everything he created. All that God made, Adam and Eve, humankind, emerged the controller of everything that God created. So you are most special count the mountains trees flowers talk about about cows cars everything you are more valuable and more special and more expensive than they because they fall under your control you have an upper hand over everything that god created and then he tells them you are are you not much better than the birds of the air if we can feed them and they do not work what about you and then jesus goes on and he mentions the lilies of the field and he tells them the flowers of the field they don't toil they don't spin yet he says even king solomon in all his glory he was not arrayed or clothed in that manner they are more beautiful more lucrative more desirable than king solomon than king solomon and the bible says the way he was arrayed, it only even suffers the glory of this ladies of the field. Now listen to me, my friend. King Solomon was a mighty king of Israel. One day, Queen Sheba came to visit King Solomon. He wanted to understand his wisdom. But look at this. It happened that King Solomon made a setup, a high table. For the queen, queen of Sheba, listen to me. When the Queen of Sheba observed everything, the, the, the way people were, were you know, we are uh, we are uh, dressed, the way they were clothed, the setup of the high table, and the wisdom of King Solomon and the house he has built for God. Then she the Bible says, the Bible says when she looked at them, you know, she marveled and his spirit went out. My friend, listen to me. If she was, you know, she got marveled for the way the officers, the ministers, the servants of King Solomon were arrayed. What about King Solomon, the king himself? He was gloriously arrayed, you know, or clothed. Listen to me. But the, the ladies of the field are well dressed, are well equipped, are well clothed than King Solomon. He goes ahead. He mentions the, the grass of the field. The grass of the field, the Bible says, 
Today it flourishes, tomorrow it withers, it is cast into the ovens and it's forgotten. But when you see it, at, at the moment it is, it is thriving, at the moment it flourishes, my friend, you are demanding. Well, but only tomorrow it is cast into the, into the oven and it is forgotten. Then Jesus is trying to ask you a question. What about you? You are more than many sparrows. You are more than the flowers of the field. You are more than the grass. You are more than food. Listen to me, my friend. That body you have is more expensive than clothing. That life you have is more expensive than a, a plate of meal. And yet, you find that most of the most of time we are so much disturbed, we are nervous. Sometimes we even we tend to believe God is there. We tend to believe uh, uh, God is not there. Sometimes we tend to believe God has forgotten us simply because we don't have a meal. We don't know what we're gonna eat tomorrow or put on. Listen to me. I even prove you wrong. If you read the last verse of that chapter, it talks about tomorrow. And, it's, and it says, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow we will take care of itself. And it continues to, to prove that the satisfaction of tomorrow is its trouble. It's its trouble. It, it, you know, trouble, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow, it need troubles it. Listen to me. I don't know why you are so much bothered about tomorrow. And God has told you, forget about tomorrow. Tomorrow we will take care of itself. And even is so much nervous and so much disturbed by, a, by its fulfillment tomorrow. When you are, you, you are so much about tomorrow, you are encroaching on somebody's work. You are encroaching on somebody's program. Because the work of program is not your work. The activities of, the activities of tomorrow is not your business. It will take care of your needs. It will take care of itself. I don't know why you worry about it. Washaki bele bele. Tomorrow, you are not assigned, my friend, to worry about tomorrow. Don't help tomorrow. Tomorrow will work for itself. It will bother for itself. It has been assigned by heaven to deliver your meal, to deliver your clothing, to deliver your peace, to deliver your blessings. I don't know why you are about it. Don't encroach on its work. Think about the kingdom. Jesus, dares tell them. Now, God knows that even you, you need these things. And Gentiles, they seek after these things. Why are you like Gentiles? And you confess to be a believer. Jesus told them, forget about them. The Heavenly Father knows that you need them. But instead, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And, you know, a kingdom of God and his righteousness. And these things shall be added unto you as well. My friend, I want to show you something. If you are a good looking lady and you get married to a certain man who is a millionaire the moment you get into his life his millions becomes yours his Mercedes Benz at the parking becomes yours his Red Lover at the parking becomes yours because the Bible says that two becomes one flesh you becomes him you know you be becomes his and he, he becomes yours and whatever he has is yours it doesn't matter you come from which kind of family? You begin to drive. You begin to be called the mom. You begin to be called the madam. You begin to be honored by, by gardeners in that place. You begin to be honored by his workers. You begin to be honored by his neighbors. You begin to be honored by his relatives. Because you have been married by him. When you have been married to God, when you have accepted God, all that he has become yours. Do, are you suffering from money? Are you suffering from man's scarcity? The Bible says he is the owner of gold and silver. Are you sick? The Bible says by his stripes we are healed. Are you worried? He says don't worry. Are you scared about tomorrow? He is there. What he has is yours. He is a provider of joy. He is a provider of peace. He is a provider of healing. He is a provider of smile. He is a provider of a mansion. He's a provider of car. Everything he has becomes yours because you belong to him. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Tomorrow is a nonsense. When worry, when worry gets gripped in someone's life, let me tell you something, my friend. You begin to behave like a foolish person. The nonsense begins to rule over you. That is the nonsense of worry. You see somebody with a lot of potential, but so much worry because of petty things, because fear has
has found its way into your life. I want to challenge you, my friend. All that God has belongs to you. Seek ye first the kingdom. And all that you are looking for is yours. Don't look for things. Look for God. Don't look for clothing. Look for God. Don't look for fame. Look for God. If you get God, everything automatically lands into your life. If you find God, you find gold. If you find God, you find wealth. You find health also. You find healing. You find joy. You find peace. You find husband. You find wife. You find children. God is everything you need. Listen to me. <laughs> Even Philippians 4, 6, it says, Therefore, do not worry. Do not worry. It uh, emphasizes on worry. It says, do not worry. That's a Bible. What you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. But by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. As I leave you, I'm telling you, do not worry. And no worry can penetrate anywhere, even in state house, even in big organizations, in hospitals, wherever, in, in, in royal homes. Fear can penetrate anywhere, so long as God is not there. But where God is, fear does not penetrate. Whether you are in a slum or in a porch estate, it doesn't matter. Listen to me, if you know who you are, fear is not your portion. Fear can never know your address. Fear can never know your particulars. Fear can never come near you. If you know who you are. Somebody sang a song and said, I know who I am. If you know who you, who you are, oh, you qualify to be above every situation. You qualify to be above every demon. You qualify to be above every circumstance. My friend, you better know who you are. And your life will become better, will become shiny, will become lucrative. You will be able to mentor many people. You will be able, you, you know, to correct and even, you know, nurture many lives if you know who you are. When the devil comes to you, you will tell him, I know, I know who I am and I know who you are. I'm above you. People have a kind of fearing in a demon. Fear is a great enemy. And it brings a lot of nonsense. You see a great man, somebody equipped with a lot, with a lot of credentials, uh, you know, education, you know, equipped with the money. That's why you have seen people, millionaires, committing suicide, killing their families. Then they run away or they commit suicide as well. You have seen great men doing things you not expect, horrible acts because of fear. Fear does not know your, your title. It only fears them that know who they are my friend i want to leave you with this fear not because fear is a great enemy jesus gave them an you know, example of all this that i've mentioned and he taught them you are above them the only problem we have on our planet earth many people does not know who they are they don't seek god they want to seek mammals and speak me you know things and substances but the only secret the only problem here they have not sought God. Seek God, you get everything. Seek God, you get gold. You get Prado. You get good wife. You get children. You get peace. You thrive in life. Seek ye first the kingdom. We have a problem today. People are running after things. Run for God. Run for God. Even cancer fears God. AIDS fears God. Crippledness fears God. Poverty fears God. If you have God, Everything will bow to you, my friend. Everything will bow to you. But if you don't have God, the money you have will not solve your problems. The worry you have will not solve your problems. We fear as if worry will solve anything for us. Worry, worry is a nonsense. It reduces you. It reduces you to nothing. Worry can re reduce a professor and it begin to behave schizophrenic. He begin to, to behave in a, in, a, in a funny way you can't understand him. It's as if he has a mental case. Worry can enter a very great person. They begin to behave petty because worry is a nonsense. When worry get grip of your life, when worry comes to your life, you begin to behave in a funny way. Worry is a nonsense. You better cast away worry. You better denounce worry. You better tell worry. 
I don't belong to you. Many people are dying in their body, the grave as a sort of worry. Many people are tamaking all over. They are so much learned, educated, people with great potentials. But worry, worry has denied them their right, has denied them their portion. My friend, I want to tell you something. Worry is a great enemy and a nonsense. Don't allow worry into your life any longer. You are more than a copra in Christ Jesus. If God be for you, who can be against you? You are above, regardless of whether you are sick, whether you live in a slum, whatever you live, you are above it. Because it's not a, it's not a, you, you know, it's not a, a, a matter or a question of where you live. It's a question of, of who you are. It's a question of whether you know who you are. Greatness is not in slum. Greatness is not in Karen. Greatness is in somebody who knows he is great. Who knows she is great. Somebody say, I'm great. Somebody say, I'm great. Hallelujah. Therefore, as I leave you, my friend, I want to tell you, stop fearing. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. Stop fearing. It's better with you. You are above. You are great. More than a cockola. My friend, my friend, seek God. Seek God and his kingdom. Seek God. Seeking means it will not just come automatically to your life. You have to use some energy, some resources, some time to look for it. Because seeking is searching. It's looking for, for something. God is not found by people who are not interested in him. You have to develop interest for him so that you may find him. Instead of tamaking all over looking for things, chasing the air, seek God, and God will show you the direction to what you are looking for in life. God will show you the direction to what you are looking for in life. He will give you ideas as, to, as, as how to make money that you are looking for in life. Because he is the owner of everything. He owns everything. If you want good ideas, the people with the best ideas, they know God. If you want to enjoy your wealth, the people who enjoy their wealth, they know God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be yours as well. Fear not. Worry is a demon. Cast it away from your life and say you are above it. Therefore, fear not. You are more than those needs, more than those finances, more than those clothings, more than those basic needs, and even the great needs. May God bless you. I want to pray with you, my friend. I want to pray with you, my dear viewer and my listener. You are not born again, and fear has controlled you 24-7 because there's no God in your life. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And fear will run away from your life. Say, Father, I have come to you. I have known this day that I'm important. But fear has stolen me from my greatness. Now I come to you. Lord, save me. Save me. Devil, I denounce you and I accept Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now you are saved. Fear we will never know your address again. You are above it. You are sick in your body. I come to you. Touch the television wherever you are. Listen to me and believe wherever you are. Father, in Jesus' name, I rebuke this sickness. I rebuke this demon. I rebuke this stress and depression and fear. I rebuke worry. I rebuke this nonsense. I cast away demons from this family, from this individual. I declare healing to that body. I declare answer to that financial need. To that domestic need, I declare an answer, I declare a solution, and I, I, I now terminate war in your life, and I declare an answer. Receive a miracle and stop suffering. Receive your healing, stop suffering. Receive finances, stop suffering. Receive goodness, stop suffering. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive your miracle. Suffer no more. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are whole. You are healed. You are above. I declare and decree. In Jesus' name, our Lord and our Savior. Somebody shout Amen. My dear listener, may God bless you. 
to support this program because this is not a one-man guitar. This is a collective work for us to, to, to preach across the globe. You can support this program. You see the numbers on the screen. You can call me. You, you can text me. You can even send your donation to support that, no, to keep us on air. And God will bless you. I love you. Enjoy your time. God bless you. We meet during Easter. Remember, every Friday, 8 in the evening. I mean, 8 that in the evening to 9. And every Saturday, 9 in the morning to 9.30. Not yet the glory. Stay tuned all the time. Every Friday and Saturday, God bless you. I want to announce a very powerful conference. Call it conference, call it convention that we have during Easter. Easter is just about only that year to fast. That is that year and that first of March to first April. We have a very powerful convention there in our sanctuary. And we welcome you from all parts of Kenya. We have great powerful men of God, international speakers. They will be there. It is gonna be powerful. It is gonna be fiery. I will also speak, I will also minister in a very powerful way. Once again, my friend, we meet next time. In this program, not yet the glory. I remind you again, remember to watch this program. Every Friday in the evening, 8.30 to 9 p.m. And every Saturday morning, 9 to 9.30. And God will bless you. Shalom.